so the woman was at the hair salon and she started talking to a stranger and she said you know I'm, I'm so happy I have the perfect son and she said you do he's perfect she said yes in every way and she said he doesn't smoke she said no he doesn't drink no he doesn't drink well he doesn't stay out late hours in the night absolutely not and she said, well, how old is he? She said, he'll be six months old Wednesday. <laughs> Part of a, an essence of this idea that we're here to be perfect and religiosity and often education, and sometimes repetitive patterning without questioning it could look different, does the same kind of dynamics. Grows a person into believing that you are good or you are bad, or you are enough or you are not, or you are falling short somehow of missing the mark and of course in traditional religiosity you you hear that from the time you are very very small that you are absolutely missing the mark and you started out that way and you were born that way and thank heavens for a teaching like unity and like new thought that says it's not about in your humanity your personality being perfect there is no one size fits all. There is the consciousness that fits all and that you are perfectly made in your design. Perfectly made in your design because we are perfectly made in the image and likeness of God. God. Beyond being a personality, because God is a principle. God is an energy. God is infinite. God is whole. God has no memory of itself other than itself as what God is, yes? And so when you're going through that space of your feeling less than whole, you're feeling inadequate, you may feel like you're not enough. If you're like me, what I know to be true is I need to go back and look at what do I believe about God? Right? Because the God I was taught about when I was a little girl and a teenager going through homosexual assessment, when I was being taught about that God, you see, that wasn't a God I could count on, you see. And then in my 20s, even in unity, I have evolved since that teaching, you see, because it, evolution is always necessary because every time we're shifting, our identity of our creator is shifting and it goes together. Where people do more pain is they're evolving and they want to keep that old God idea the same. Or their God's evolving, but they want to stay stuck in the sameness. Do you resonate with this? Because I have a few more minutes. I, I, so does this work for you because it's part of our fundamental reality it's at the core of our spiritual evolution it's our biggest life lesson is to understand that the only thing that has ever been in our way is ourselves yes. Yes. and we can quote Marianne Williamson till the cows come home but we want to live that quote that it is not our darkness that scares us so much. It's the light of who we are. It is the light of who we are created to be perfectly in the design. You see, because the word perfect was made by and is made by humankind. We're perfectly created in the image and likeness of God is creative kind. Do you see the difference? And so you look at that. There's a story of a man that goes to a flower shop and he says to the store owner, he said, I need to get some potted red geraniums. And the owner said, oh, too bad, we've just sold out. 
but how about some African violets potted? How would that do? He said, oh, no, that won't help. It was red geraniums that my wife asked me to water while she was gone. <laughs> A spiritual path is our divine birthright, but like all divine birthright essence, it's a responsibility. It's a responsibility to continue to weed out what is no longer appropriate in your life. You don't want to over fear to lies. You, right? Or over water you, it's a balance of responsibility of understanding that space and that consciousness. We're talking today about the heart of a visionary. And all of you are visionaries. Every one of you are seated here, are living where you do, having what you have, experiencing what you have, because somewhere you said that was going to be you. And whether you remember it or not, you said it, and therefore, that's the reason that you're here. Physically here, seated here, et cetera, et cetera. Can we agree with that? Yes. yes. And so, I love the shouter component. Thank you, Mickey. It's like, yeah. 27 years, somebody's still shouting. Yeah, okay. No. Sorry, I digressed. Um, the heart of the visionary is understanding that it's not that we're good, I was good, uh, I was bad. It's not all these taught stuff that we've learned. It's about the integration that we are light and dark. It's about the original idea of creation. Light and dark were both created and both were good. Not one is preferred over the other. The key is that we learn to integrate both of those aspects of who we are. And so a heart is the strongest magnet that we have in our lives. It is thousands and tens of thousands times stronger than the mind in what we are attracting in and what we're bringing in. But when the shadow of the heart, when it's wounded, we practice things such as self-abandonment, we practice things as projecting onto others who we could be, but don't feel we deserve to be. Does that suit any of you? It was my story for years and years and years, wherever somebody else wanted to go, I wanted to help them get there. Because I was too uncomfortable and unwilling to accept that I deserved to be there, you see. So I projected onto others like this complex of saving, helping, supporting, getting them to a place. That's why a lot of children turn on their parents psychologically or resent them because their parents push onto them dreams that were really theirs to have. But they want the children to fulfill it when it's not theirs to do. Everybody breathe, I'm not talking about anybody in particular. <laughs> All right. This is that projecting onto others, it's that sacred saboteur of that because we are here perfectly designed to be no different than who we are supposed to be. And when we are stepping into that space, you see, then our heart lessens the need to be right, which is another part of that woundology, I need to be right. When you're in a space of healthiness in your heart, you're just focusing on fulfilling your own dreams and purpose. You're fulfilling an energy. You're looking at life through intuition and perception and inner knowing. And it doesn't matter what everybody else is accomplishing or doing. No one's going to take your good away from you. There's no such thing as competition. No one can hurt you. No one can ever hurt you. Yes. Ever. No one can ever hurt you. It's because you have allowed it to be so. That it has happened either for a day or a week or most of your life. You see. And whatever reality that we hold, we have decided to do so. Yes, there's an action that happens. Someone does something very painful to us. I get that. Where I go with it is on my karma. 
And so it's a whole different kind of space. It's a much bigger life to live from this perspective because you want everybody to accomplish their own dreams and their purpose, don't you? Yeah. And you want them to live and that mission is very powerful. And at the moment we decide that transformation is possible, it's possible. You think back upon, I think one of the greatest examples of our principle called prayer and unity is Clark Kent going into that phone booth. <laughs> you know, and Clark, I mean, he just, he would see things happening in the world. He didn't run around, do seminars all over the world. How can we change the world? He didn't run on Facebook and go, can you believe it? Oh my gosh, this is going on, and jump on. No, what did he do? He went in the phone booth. Does everybody that's young here know what a phone booth is? <laughs> We're happy for you if you don't, please look it up. All right, but he went in this phone booth and he stood there in that space and said, be ye transformed. Say it with me, be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind and may your heart be open to understand who you are. And in that he transformed that space. You know, I love that when we teach life changes and you know, metaphysical teaching about change, we often use the example of from a caterpillar to a chrysalis to a butterfly. We talk about that. But you know, the difference between that experience and that life experience for that particular species is ours is different. For us, it does not take that long. For us, transformation happens the moment that we decide that we are ready for it to happen. In that particular space of that transformation, it is done. So the question is, what are you ready to step into your phone booth about today? What identity, what idea have you been holding for yourself or for others that is in the way of you perfectly expressing who you were designed to be? You see, that's it. That's it. In that agreement, wherever you are supposed to be, even if you're determined to be in the way of it, it's going to happen. Because you have declared it so. I'll close with an idea. A little girl, right when cell phones were first coming out, she had her mom's cell phone and she was talking away to someone of this and that and oh yeah and come by and we can play and after this went on for a while her mom thought wow I need to go check and see how she's running up my minutes <laughs> and she takes the phone from the little girl and she looks and she's not even connected <laughs> she's acting the part but she's not connected I did that a long time growing up. I acted the part. I could show you what it looked like, but the believability and that unwavering connection that can carry you through anything, perfectly sharing the design of your creation, it's about being connected. And as Forrest Gump would say, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you. Love you all. <laughs>